Hi guys, Professor Voza here from uh, City Tech. And today we um, are going to dissect the sheep brain as an illustration of the nervous system. So here I am displaying several sheep brains so you can see um, about the size of them, their shape. Um, these are preserved, so they're pretty rubbery and, and tough, but when they're fresh, they're very squishy and they fall apart easily. It's a very, very soft tissue um, or organ overall that we're dealing with. And it's once it's fixed like this, it's really much easier to handle. And of course, it's preserved, so it can uh, wait for you to come and dissect it. So um, some of these brains are a little sideways because they were all packed in a plastic bag and um, they don't have the normal shape, if we can say. So here, um, I just want to, you to see that these brains have been um, peeled somehow because normally when they sit in the skull, they, um, they are covered with the meninges. The meninges are several layers um, that are covering the brain and they all have different functions. There's one left actually on some of these brains and it's the thinnest one that is um, you might see it a little bit here if I go under it with the probe. It's very thin and it's very hard to peel too and that's the one that contains um, the blood vessels. So that one is still on the brains. Uh, the rest has been removed. And sometimes if you have the dura mater, which is one of the meninges, it's very white um, and tough. Uh, that one is no longer on the brains. So we're just going to keep one for today's dissection. So I'm gonna place those back in their bag. And I think I'm gonna pick this one because it looks not too deformed. All right, so first, this is a sheep brain and compared to a human brain, you'll have several differences. Of course, the size um, and the shape. So our brain is going to have a different shape. It looks rounder, whereas the sheep brain and the brain of vertebrates that are on four legs is going to be more in one plane. And that's because their head is really not in the same position as ours. Try to get on four on your four legs and hold your head how a sheep or a dog or a cat would hold it. You'll, you'll see that that's not how you hold your head when you're on two legs. All right. So of course the size is different. It's kind of proportional to the body, but in humans, um, Overall, compared to the rest of the body, the, we have the biggest brain. So the ratio is different for humans. We have a large brain. So the sheep brain is convenient. It's readily available and it has a lot in common with the human brain. So that allows us to uh, work pretty well and learn a lot um, from our own brain. So let me take the probe first to show you different parts. So here is the front of the brain. This is the posterior part, the back. So this would be the front of the animal, and this is the back. You can recognize the spinal cord here. So that would be going into the backbone and the vertebrae. This is the dorsal part, the top of the head of the animal here, this part. And then this one, this part here is the ventral part. So that's the belly part. So that's the part that would face the ground. If I turn the brain on to see the ventral part, you'll see that um, the aspect is very different from the dorsal part. So let's look at structures we can see on the dorsal part. Um, here we have, I'll just go sideways so you get to see the whole brain. So we have this part with lots of ridges that's called the cerebrum. Cerebrum. It has those ridges and bumps. These are called sulci for sulcus and gyri for the, bu the bumps. 
And in the sulci, you see the blood vessels. They're dark because now the blood is um, coagulated. This little part here is called the cerebellum. That's a part involved in coordination of our movement and balance as well. Um, cerebellum, which really, really means little brain, and it almost looks like it's separate from the rest of the brain. The cerebrum is the part that's involved in higher functions. For example, for us speaking, um, reading, that's where it's going to be involved. Of course, it has a role in memories and other functions. And then here you see the spinal cord. The cerebrum is split into two hemispheres. Hemi means half, so two halves. And you see this natural split here. This is called the longitudinal fissure, but it's, split, it's spelled fissure. I'm French, so that's easy for me to say. Longitudinal, because it's in the long side, longitudinal fissure. Therefore, you have the front of your brain here at the back. This is the right cerebral hemisphere. And this one is the left cerebral hemisphere. The cerebrum is divided in lobes. The frontal lobe in the front. The parietal lobe. The occipital lobe. And you have two lobes of each, each of course, since you have those two halves for bilateral symmetry. And then on the sides here are the temporal lobes by the temples. So these are the lobes of the cerebrum. Now I'm exposing the ventral side of this brain. Just look at it in from all angles. <laughs> so Actually, I should take another brain because this one is not too great underneath. Um, let's take this one. Yeah, much better. <laughs> so here we have um, the spinal cord that I mentioned before, but then you have other structures here. They all appear quite white uh, compared to the rest. And if you look from the side, the spinal cord basically starts where the cerebellum stops. Then you have this part here called the medulla oblongata, medulla oblongata. Then a structure here that, ha that is looking flat now, but normally it looks kind of bumpy, like to me, I call it the little butt because it looks like two butt cheeks right here and then two legs. Um, and this bumpy part, maybe it's a little better here. Not really. Um, this bumpy part is called the pons, P-O-N-S, which means bridge, the pons. And then here we have the midbrain, but it's really a region of the brain. It's not well defined. It's going to be hard for you to... Um, to just say it starts here and stops there. But a um, helpful hint is where the cerebellum starts and stops. So where it stops here, you know that's the spinal cord. Then you have the medulla oblongata, and then here, that bumpy part normally, the pons. Now, we also have those two white structures here. These are nerves coming from the eyes. So these are tracks. We call them optic tracks or optic nerves. And they've been cut because normally you see a nice little X. So the, this one here goes like that from, um, that would be the right eye to the left side of the brain. And then the one that's to the left eye to the right side of the brain. So it forms an X and these, this X is formed by the optic nerves. The crossing, the X, is called a chiasm or chiasma. And since these are nerves related to the eyes, we call it the optic chiasm or the optic chiasma. Here we have those two little flaps here. There's one. You can see it right here. There's another one and it's been completely severed. <laughs> so it's cut, it's not 
the entire structure, but there's two of them. And these are called the olfactory, olfactory, that's your sense of smell, bulbs, like light bulbs. These again are nerves related to the nose. So olfactory bulbs, very easy to see, they're white. Same thing for the optic chiasm, it's very white. Okay, so let's go back to the nice green I first picked here. <laughs> um, just to give you another view, so you can see again the, cere the cerebrum with the two cerebral hemispheres, the cerebellum. I can bring it down a little bit and you can see more inside the brain. And that's something nice to do when um, we're going to perform the dissection to make sure that you're really in the middle of the brain because we're going to cut along this split. Remember what it's called? The longitudinal fissure. And we want to be right in the middle so that we have two almost identical halves of the brain. So I'm gonna grab the scalpel for that purpose. So I'm gonna go cut here. And I have to slice through the cerebellum as well. And then the spinal cord. like it's quite decent all right so now we have our two halves can just work with one okay this is all the energy sticking around which half do I prefer? They look quite similar. Can remove this here. So we're going to go with this one. I feel there's a little more contrast on it. <clears throat> so what do we see? We have um, the structures we've seen already, the spinal cord here, the medulla oblongata, the pons, the midbrain, the cerebellum that you can see now from inside, and it looks like there's branching around, and it looks like a tree, so they call it the tree of life, the arbor vitae. That's in the a typical appearance of the cerebellum. I do think it looks a little bit like cauliflower more than anything. <laughs> um, so the midbrain here, Pons, medulla oblongata, and be careful with the spelling, check it out in the manual, and the spinal cord. Now we have, um, let's go with oh, the cerebrum, of course. Let me get some tweezers here. We have this structure shown here. Um, let me show that structure as well on this half. This part here, it looks like an ear a little bit. That's the corpus callosum, corpus callosum. And if you uh, play around with it, sometimes it's already very obvious, but not on this brain. There's a space here. Spaces in the brain are called ventricles. There are several ones, but for this class, you don't need to know all of them. We just want you to know one. And it's this one here, this space called the lateral ventricle, right? And it's lined on the top by the corpus callosum. 
lateral ventricle, corpus callosum. This corpus callosum, we just cut it in half, but it's actually a bridge structure between the two parts of your brain, between the right side and the left side. And then there's um, that the space here that is normally filled with cerebrospinal fluid, cerebrospinal fluid, in which the brain bathes and all the spaces are filled with that fluid, which is tightly regulated by the body. Um, now, if we follow this corpus callosum all the way to its posterior end, right below we have this little structure, which is a gland called the pineal body or pineal gland here. Looks like a, a little pea, so we just cut it. It's a little more obvious on this side here. So corpus callosum, we go all the way to the back of it. And then right below, we have the uh, pineal gland. Here, there's a roundish part. That's the thalamus. You've probably heard of it before. And below the thalamus, under is the hypothalamus. Thalamus, hypothalamus, midbrain right here. Pons, middle oblongata, spinal cord. I'm sure you know that already by now. Um, so I guess we've seen um, all the structures you need to know here. I want to um, again show you what we did. We cut this in half. So we also cut, which was not too obvious on this brain, we also cut the optic chiasma that was right here. We can see a piece on here. And sometimes you might see this optic chiasma. You can still see it here, or well, a piece of it from the dissection right here. Um, in many um, image that you might find, there will also be extra structures below, um, but we don't have those on these brains. That would be the pituitary gland, and it's not here, and that's not something you need to know. So we just went over everything you need to know for this class. So let's go over everything again. Spinal cord, cerebellum, right cerebral hemisphere, left cerebral hemisphere, the two form the cerebrum, which has different lobes, frontal lobes, parietal lobes, occipital lobes, and then temporal lobes by the ears, by the temples. Now, if we turn the brain around, let's look at it from this side. Oops, didn't cut in the middle. <laughs> Again, let's look at this guy. Spinal cord, medulla oblongata, medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain. Spinal cord, medulla oblongata, pons, midbrain optic chiasma and olfactory bulb here and bulbs if it's the two of them. Now from the cross section, spinal cord, medulla oblongata, the pons, it's usually really bumpy but we're not lucky on those brains, um, midbrain, thalamus, hypothalamus, corpus callosum, pineal gland, lateral ventricle. And of course, we see again the cerebrum here, or one, uh, or you can also go with the lobes, frontal, parietal, occipital, but from this view, we cannot see the temporal lobe. And then the arbor vitae or cerebellum. So I think, We've seen everything. You might want to now practice on your own and be careful with the spelling. Thank you for watching.